Hey there, welcome to Synth Seeker. My name's Luke. Uh, I've been getting a couple questions. Uh, I did a video uh, earlier on uh, phasing, Berlin School sort of note phasing. And uh, a couple people asked, hey, how are you doing those sort of global key transpositions uh, in Ableton? Depending on what kind of step sequencer you use, you may be able to just do transpositions within the sequencer. Um, but I've been wanting to do it in Ableton, so this video is actually uh, a video about a software hack that I've put together. If you've looked at any of my other videos about Max for Live, you know that I will build little tools that are useful for me and then just release them uh, to the general public for you to use if you find them useful. Uh, they're not super awesome quality, they're not full of features, they're just little simple tools. Uh, that get things done. And uh, so this video is basically about how I did those global transpositions. I use a little tool uh, that I call uh, key to mod and what it does is it maps key input, like off your keyboard, uh, notes, to um, you can use it to modulate parameters within live. And I use it specifically to modulate the pitch knob uh, across and it handles it globally. So when one note comes in every pitch knob that I've got assigned to the key to mod uh, plugin will uh, modulate or transpose uh, together in unison. So let me show you how this works. So if you uh, go to the link in description, you will go to my website to a little folder called key to mod. There's a key to mod.zip file. You want to download that. All right. And once that's down, you'll want to open that up. And there's two little plugins in there. Uh, key to mod send and receive. Again, this is a bit of a hack, okay? It's not an elegant solution, but it's stable uh, and works well enough for me to say, okay, I'll share this and you guys can use it. If you are a Max for Live hacker, uh, go build on top of this and send it back to me. Let me know if you make something awesome. I'll use your thing uh, in the future. But you'll get these two little dubs. Uh, what you want to do is you want to throw these into your user library, I'm just going to drop them in the current project folder right now. And it's literally a drag and drop action. I'm going to put them in my current project. All right, so there's a sender and a receiver. Now, what I've got here is a little uh, sort of Berlin-esque, a little um, repeating loop here. Let's listen to this for a second. Okay, and what we've got here is a little bass line doing its thing. And then a couple lines that are mirroring each other. These lines are actually phasing and a little rhythm track, okay? And what I'd like to do is, in each of these three instruments, I'd like them to transpose them all in unison by playing keys on my keyboard, my input surface, whatever that is. Um, and so in order to keep them in key, we have to set up a few things. First, we are going to need a pitch device. This is the Ableton MIDI pitch device. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way, where I'm reusing and targeting Ableton's devices, is because they're way more robust and way more efficient than me doing it in Max. Yeah, it's pretty trivial to do it in Max, but it, um, the Ableton-based ones will do things like if there are notes sustaining when you do a transposition, it will clean up after itself, and I don't feel like doing that in Max myself, so whatever. If you want to do it, go for it. But um, what you want to do is I've got this instrument playing. I've given it a pitch control that's at zero, okay, so it is not doing anything yet. And I'm following it with a scale, a MIDI scale device, that's going to constrain any pitch changes I make to my current scale. This is in C minor right now, okay, and then my instruments are playing. Uh, and that's the same on all of these instruments. There's an empty pitch device, or a, a pitch at zero, and then a scale device. Okay, same here. Pitch device, scale device. All right. And what you want to do is you want to take the receiver, key to mod receiver, and you want to drop this somewhere on that track. And I generally put it at the beginning of the track. Now, these devices, unfortunately, right now, do not work inside groupings. Do they do not work inside racks? Okay because I haven't bothered to do that yet. So, not a big deal. Just keep them outside any rack that you're gonna put them in. When you drop this receiver device in, it's going to have a few controls. You'll wanna click the refresh device button, and then you're going to select the device that you want to modulate. In this case, we're gonna be modulating the pitch device. That's this one. And which parameter? Well, we're going to modulate the pitch parameter, okay? And that's good. 
If you save this set, it'll remember that stuff. You don't have to set it up again. Okay. Uh, and we want to do that for each of the instruments. So refresh that device, pick the pitch device and the pitch parameter for it. And then our third and final one, we'll refresh that device, pitch, and pitch. You can experiment with targeting other parameters that will send them the note values 0 to 127 for whatever comes in from the keys you press. Experiment, play with it, it'll work. Um, but uh, I just intended it for being used for pitch transposition and then everything else is just gravy and laziness on my part. So uh, make use of it as you, you know, to your heart's content. So once we've set up our three receivers here, we have to set up a track, which I've already got sitting here. You need an, a MIDI track that's always monitoring or monitor, monitoring your input. So if you're going to be doing this transposition from a control surface, set your MIDI in to be that control surface or, um, you know, as appropriate or set your monitor to in or auto if you're going to be turning on and arming and, and turning off arming. But I generally set it to just listen all the time. And what you're going to drag in here is the key to mod sender. Okay. This little device is the device that takes the notes that come in and then sends them out to all the trans to all the receivers to then modulate whatever they're pointing at. In this case, the pitch device. Okay. Uh, there's a little convenience here. If you know what key you're in, uh, just press the note, the root note of whatever you're going to be, C3 in this case, and then click the button that says set as root. That sets whatever note is currently in this box to the root for all the transposition stuff, all the pitch shifting stuff. Uh, that sends it over. So if you go and look at the other devices, you'll see that their root note has been set to C3, C3, and C3 because I set it from the master here. I said, okay, we're going to set it to C3 and set as root. If I wanted it to be in D or E, I could do that and set that as root, but we're going to work in C today. Um, and this will just blink for activity and things like that, so you can verify that it's working for your system. Okay, nothing too fancy. Now, we've got this sender that's going to send our notes across. We've got a receiver on each of my instrument tracks that's mapped to the pitch device pitch parameter. Okay, and as you can see, when I press keys, my transposition happens. And the scale device will keep it within key when it does the transpositions. So now if I hit play, now when I press keys on my keyboard, I get a transposition. It's that simple, right? Basic tools for basic users, right? <laughs> I'm not doing anything fancy. Uh, if this is useful for you, feel free to use it. Uh, please don't um, republish this and try and sell it or things like that. It's not up to Ableton standards, okay? <laughs> I don't go through and QE this, get, do a quality assurance on this to make sure it's not going to crash your system. Uh, it hasn't crashed mine yet. It's behaving well. When I save a set and reopen a set, it's working fine. Uh, if you are a Max for Live developer and you want to enhance this and roll it into your own thing, that's fine. But at least attribute me, you know, stick a note in there somewhere that says, hey, this was from uh, Synth, Seekers pay, uh, Synth Seekers Plays, right? Uh, and really, that's about it. You know, just giving back to the community. I hope that's useful for you. But again, it lets you play a simple loop and transpose it however you like. See what I'm pressing here. So here's C. All right, makes sense. And that's how it works. So hey, if that's useful for you, do with it as you will. Uh, and as always, you have been watching Synth Seeker. Have a great night.